friends. We come in this special place to share with Adrian's and Karina's most important moment in their lives. Marriage was instituted by God in the Garden of Eden when he saw that it was not good for man to be alone. Christ beautified marriage with his presence in Cana of Galilee when he wrote his first miracle. It is commended by the Apostle Paul who likened it to the holy union which exists between Christ and his church in which our Lord Jesus is called the bridegroom and his church the bride. If you could stand together and let us open this with prayer. Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence. You're the number one guest, Lord God, that is in this place. Lord, we ask your great God to bless each and every one of us. And we honor your great God with this momentous occasion, great God. So we bless your name. We give you thanks and praise for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And who gives Karina to be married to Adrian? Pedro. You may take your seat. We learn from the Spirit-inspired record that the Lord Jesus Christ honored the marriage ceremony with His presence working there at the beginning of his miracles. These miracles indicate that Jesus Christ is the only God, the sovereign and the creator of the, he of the heavens and the earth. And the wedding ceremony was first used to demonstrate his glorious institution. His purpose on earth was to seek and to save that which was lost. As the scriptures declare that he came to reconcile us back to him, in marriage there is a union between the Savior, the bridegroom, and the church, which is the bride. And the scripture also says that a man shall leave his mother and his father and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one. And therefore his invitation to all who witness the wedding ceremony today is to understand the great mystery and that is all about the relationship between Christ and the church as exemplified a relationship between husband and wife. The Bible, which is the word of God, declares marriage to be honorable and bed undefiled. It was ordained of God in the time of man's innocency before he had sinned against the Lord. Since marriage has always been a divine institution, it is to be entered into soberly and discreetly with dignity in his sight. God himself unite, united the first members of the human family that fact alone should abolish all light and frivolous views of marriage. The bridegroom and bride are partners in life. It's forsaking mother and father to cleave unto each other and be two, and the two become one. They share a common name, united household, a common experience, one purpose and a love which blesses and transcends all the cares and the trials of life. Adrian and Karina, you will now have a common interest and occupations. You become co-workers for common ends. You hold property and possessions in common and you have essentially one goal, one history and one destiny. Inscribed in the word of God is the counsel you will need for this mutual and blessed relationship. The vows are sacred and to be broken only by death. In token of having chosen each other as partners of our life, you may now join hands together facing each other. Do you, Adrian, take Karina? whom you hold by your hand to be your lawful and wedded wife. I do. Do you promise to love, to cherish, to honor, to protect, forsaking all others in sickness as well as in health, in adversity as well as in prosperity, for better or for worse, and to cleave unto her as so long as she but shall live? I do. Would you repeat your vow, what you have said? I I, Adrian, take, take you, Karina, Karina, to be my wedded wife. To have, to have and hold, to hold from this day forward, for okay. better, for worse, for richer, for richer, for poorer, in sickness or in health. To love, to love and to cherish, to death, to, to death to, 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 to our heart. And here too. And here too, I pledge my faithfulness. Do you, Karina, 
take Adrian to be your lawful and wedded husband? I do. Do you promise to love, to cherish, to honor, to obey, to submit, forsaking all others in sickness as well as in health, in adversity as well as in prosperity, for better or for worse, and to declare unto him so long, and to cleave unto him so long as you both shall live? I do. Would you repeat your vows, just what you have said? I, Karina, take you, Adrian, to be my wedded husband. To have. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better. For better, for worse. For richer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness. In sickness or in health. To love. To love and to cherish. Till death. Till that death part. And here too I pledge. And here too I pledge you my faithfulness. Adrian, what token do you give to show that you will faithfully perform these vows? This ring. The circle which forms this ring is the emblem of eternity. And the beautiful metal out of which it is wrought is the type to which at least tarnished and most enduring. It is to show how lasting and imperishable the faith now mutually pledged to be loyal to each other till death. Will you please this ring on Karina's ring finger and repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring I, pledge myself I pledge myself to you, to you. With, all the affections of my heart, with all the affections of my heart, so long as we both shall live. So long as we both shall live. And Karina, what token do you give to show that you will faithfully perform these vows? Please place the ring on Adrian's ring finger and repeat after me. This ring, this ring I, pledge myself to you, I pledge myself to you with all the affections of my heart so long as we both shall live. Let us pray together. Let us unite in prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this home that is now called into existence. And we ask your blessings upon Adrian and Karina all the days of their lives. That as united into one family, they might glorify you and make you as the center of their life. That they might serve you acceptably and that their lives together might present the glorious truth of God's word. The union of Christ and the church. Bless them to this end, for we ask this in the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, even the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture declares, love is forbearing and kind, love knows no jealousy, love does not brag, is not conceited. Love is not unmannerly, nor selfish, nor irritable, nor mindful wrongs. Love does not rejoice in injustice, but joyfully sides with the truth, can overlook faults. Love is full of trust, full of hope, full of endurance, love never fails. And having heard the pledges of your affection and vows of your fidelity, I do hereby, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of Queensland and the minister of the United Pentecostal Church of Australia, before God, whose grace to you is unmeasured, and before these witnesses, pronounce you husband and wife, and what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You may kiss the bride. Yeah. Okay, as uh, you remain seated, we have to sign some papers and I'm going to present them to you after that.
ordinary, no ordinary love. You are the first to touch my heart, and everything's right again with your extraordinary love. But you're here before my very eyes. You brought joy to my world, set me so. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Elkham. Yeah. Yeah.